Hi everyone, again, again. Um, sorry you've got me twice. Um, I've got 22 minutes to do this. I've probably got too many slides, so I'm going to probably go through it quite quickly. I, it is a very dry talk about what SPI and I squared C buses are how to, and how to use them. It's as simple as that. It's a kind of for people who never really had to play with them before. So I'm basically going to go through what SPI is, a serial interface, um, how to use it from C briefly, how to use it from Python, and the same with I squared C. They're kind of related. Um, differences, SPI is simpler in um, simpler technology. I squared C is actually simpler to use with multiple devices. Um, SPI, four connections, rewrite, chip select, and the clock. Um, you can rewrite at the same time, so it's duplex. Um, you need a chip select per client device. I squared C, two connections, clock, and a rewrite line, so you tend to want to do, so you tend to do things half duplex. But every device has an address, so you basically wire them all in parallel. <laughs> So that was the next slide. So SPI, clock, typically active, uh, chip select, chip, typically low, clock, um, mostly master out, slave in. So if you look at a client chip, it will also say mostly, but that will mean it's the input on the client because it's the slave, not the master. And my so master in, slave out. Um, because it's pretty simple, you can actually implement it in software just using GPIOs. Wiring it up, it's as simple as that. Can get MOSI to MOSI and MISO to MISO, and, but you might see it as data in and data out. And the data is clocked in most significant bit first. Now, the fun is, Nobody got together and decided when you read, when you write, and what, what, um, what polarity the clock is. So there are actually four different modes you can run SPI in. Uh, you can have a positive a clock, positive clock, negative clock. You can read on the leading edge, or read and write on the leading edge, or read and write on the falling edge. Um, most things use mode zero, but check. What multiple devices? You wire all the MISOs and MOSIs in parallel. You have to have a separate chip select for each of the slave devices. If you're lucky, then the SPI master already has that. If you're unlucky and it only has one, you can kind of fake it with something like a, an LS7138, uh, which is a decoder chip, and it's got enables for um, high and low enables. So if you connect the low enable to the chip select, and then you use GPIOs to set the output, you can kind of use the GPIOs to select which slave you're going to talk to. Um, I didn't do a diagram for that, because it's a bit esoteric, but anybody wants to talk to me afterwards, they can do. As I said, you can do it in software. So that is completely software SPI. In fact, that's a clean up of SPI code I wrote for 6502 on a BBC Micro using the GPIO port. And I drove an Ethernet interface with it. <laughs> so. Doing it on a Pi. Um, by default on Raspbian, the SPI driver is not enabled and not installed. If you don't want to try it one off, you can install it for the session. If you want to enable it permanently, just comment it out of the blacklist file. Um, once you've done that, you'll have to reboot. So once you've enabled that, there will now be an SPI device available to you that you can use. Um, so in C, it's just open the device, 
Right, if you can see, it's got 2.0 there. The 2 means it's SBI device 2. The 0 means it's chip select 0 for that device. And the reason I've got 2 and 0 here is this code is actually off of a beagle bone, not a Raspberry Pi. But it's exactly the same. The only reason I use a Raspberry Pi is because everybody seems to have them. Um, you can simply write bytes out and read them in using the standard C read and write, or you can do a full duplex using an IOCTOR and a data structure. Um, that is, um, there's documentation in the kernel docs directory if you want to go that route. Um, I've never needed to use it yet. Python. Um, install Python dev. Get the SPI device Python extension from GitHub and build it and install it. So once you've got that in there, you now have a Python SPI device. So you can just do import it as normal, open it. In this case, I'm inconsistent. I'm opening SPI device zero, not two, and chip select zero. So once I've got that, I can read and write bytes as before or you transfer. If you go to, if you basically Google this device, you'll find there's a lot more um, methods you can do, but that's the basics for um, reading and writing from the SPI bus. As a little aside, um, as I said, it's most significant bit on the bus, which means you've got to do some bit swapping. That's a piece of code. When, when, you publish, when I publish my slides, that's a piece of code that does an efficient bit swap for a byte. It can be useful. So what's, what have we got is, which is SPI, which is useful? SD cards. That's why everything uses SD cards to boot. All these little embedded devices use SD cards because they're simple to read and write. Um, if you use it in legacy old MMC mode, it is just an SPI device with a data in, data out, a clock, and a chip select. Um, there's an Arduino library that allows you to read them and read a FAT file system off of them. I've got, I actually got a knitted toy that I knitted, which has got um, an Arduino in it with an SD card and a digital to analog converter. And a, little amplifier and a loudspeaker. Basically, it plays samples off the SD card through the speaker when you molest a toy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is useful on a Pi, because it's all, it doesn't really have any, that's a nice little eight channel analog to digital converter. Um, again, just clocks, chip select, data in to master out, and data out to master in. And there's a, that's about £1.50 from flying else out. So if you need analog reading on your Pi, use one of those. What am I in? Eight minutes. OK. I squared C. Sort of next gen SPI. Um, cut down on the connection. So we've got two connections the serial clock line and the data line. And the data has both read and write. So you, to select any peripheral, you have to have its address. You can do this by GPIOs again. Um, the code is somewhat more sophisticated, so I haven't got a slide showing it because I don't bother because most things have got an I squared C master on them. So. There we are, we have a bunch of devices on an I2C bus. The protocol is that a device only ever pulls the bus low. So to keep it high, there are pull-up resistors. Um, the Raspberry Pi has them built in, so you don't have to worry about them. If you're doing it on a beagle bone, you've got to put them in yourself. They're 5.6K or something like that. Okay. <laughs> but whatever. Um, 
to the to the line, and and there is a collision detection in there, so you can see if two. And there's also a thing called clock stretching, which means a device can hold the line down if it needs to take longer than the, the clock you're driving the bus at. Addresses are seven bit, with the eighth bit being the read and write bit. Um, if you want to write, you just write. If you want to read, you typically have to tell it the address and then read back from the device. Um, most things have multiple registers, so what you're actually saying is, I want to read to device X, register Y, so you write that and then you'll read back the value from that. You can also find that a lot of chips support multiple reads. So if you read from register if you read ten times and you started with say register ten, it'll actually read from register 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and so on, provided they're all one byte big. Um, going on the Pi temporarily enable them. Now, I squared C on Raspbian, you need two, two modules, so we can just mod probe them if we need them. Or again, we can take one out of the blacklist file and we can add the other one to the modules file to ensure that gets loaded at boot. Um, right. Another nice thing you might want to install are the Linux I squared C tools, which you can, again, with a, a Raspbian Debian type one, just thought, um, apt get install them. I haven't actually got anything connected to my I squared C bus, which makes it really boring. But um, <laughs> if I had, um, the addresses would appear in the relevant place within that address map. If anybody wants to see this actually happening tomorrow, I will, as an aside in my um, tutorial, I will have my Pi and a monitor, and I'll have breadboards and things hanging off of it, so I can knock something up quickly and give a quick demo. <laughs> so, I squared C in Linux. I can probably slow down now. I've realised how quickly I've been talking. Um, again, just a header. Open the device. Again, this piece of code is off of a beagle bone, I think, because I'm using I squared C device three. Um, and the bone is one and three, uh, and two is used internally. Um, so yeah, you want to write to a value, just the register, and the value, and once you've opened, once you've selected the address, you can write to it, or if you want to read, then you want to write the register, and then you read the value back. For Python, this time, unlike the other one, you don't actually have to build it. Um, the SM bus extension, I squared C bus extension, is actually already available as a package. Um, so we just need to app get install that. Uh, we import it, open it. Slightly unlike um, the SPI one, it's a slightly different style of using it. So the SPI one seems to have a as you have a device and then you open the device, here, you basically, there's a factory method that returns the device when you request it. Um, read and write data. Again, there's a bunch of APIs, but the typical ones, you just want to read some data or write some data back. That's with the obvious APIs. So, what's a good I squared C device that might be useful on a Pi? That, which is an 8-bit GPIO extender. Uh, there's a nice 16-bit one as well. Um, 
but basically you can support up to eight if you see that there's um there's eight address there's three address pins which allow you to tweak the base address you find this quite typical because if everything just has a fixed i squared c address and you want to have more than one on your bus then they'll conflict because you'll just end up talking to both of them at the same time so most i squared c devices have a way of strapping pins to change its address. Um, we got a reset line, useful if it goes wrong, just connect it to a GPIO and pull it low when it starts misbehaving. An interrupt line, um, I squared C has no way of supporting interrupts, not as, a, not as a way of the device contacting us in an interrupt type situation. So what you do is you take you just connect an interrupt again up to another GPIO and you just say, oh, this device has had something. I'll go read its status register to find out what it's moaning about. Um, so we set the address range. We connect up our clocks and our data line. But we can ignore reset for now and interrupt for now. And we've got eight GPIOs. And because I was bored about 18 months ago, and I had a very small Christmas tree on my, on my desk at work, I made it some internet-enabled tweetable Christmas lights, as you do. <laughs> so you could tweet it with a number, and it would change its pattern. <laughs> but it's basically, if you can see, there are literally just two connections to the pie which is the clock and the light. And, and yeah, we've got power as well, but the power is actually external. So there's ground and the two signal lines. Um, I've got two of the same chip. So one of them has got the address set as all zeros, and the other one's set as zero, zero, 001. And that particular chip is quite good at driving um, if you've got them all on at the same time, it's a bit near its some current limit. But if you're just kind of flickering them and moving them around and so on, you're OK, you'll get away with it. Um, Pi permissions, right. Uh, by default, you'll have to be uh, root to um, run anything that wants to access these devices. But nicely, you can create group. Um, there's a couple of groups that you can add yourself as a user. So if, it's, if you're a, if your only username is Pi, you can add yourself to the SBI group and the I squared C group, and then you can run your Python without having to do it as sudo. You can just run it as yourself. Um, again, if you ever change your group and you find it doesn't work, log out your shell and log back in again. <laughs> It's because you haven't picked up your permissions. Now, if you want to test I squared C devices in a nice and simple way, one of these, the Bus Pirate, is a little USB, open source USB device that you can hook up um, and it supports, it's got a serial console, so you just type commands in the console. It's got SPI, I squared C, JTAG, the UR, and a couple of uh, ADC in and controls of power. So if you've got a, a new device and you want to test it and play with it without having to do too much work, you can just basically stick it into the breadboard, connect this to it, and use that to drive it. And oh, I'm under time. Any questions? <laughs>